Sorry so when I was a brain tumor patient, I could not pass my urine and motion normally also. Mm -hmm. My hair was falling, I was using spec, mm. my memory was weak, I could not remember whether I had my food or not. Mm. So when doctors could not heal me and God healed me, how can I not believe in science and wonder mm -hmm. and supernatural and miracle and science and wonder? Yes, Tell me in brief, like the, the journey of a healing that you have received from God as you believed. Yeah, it's like, a long story, but I'll yeah. just say in very brief. Very brief. Hello everyone, today I have a very special guest uh, with me and he is Pastor Azadul Naga and he's a senior pastor of New Life Ministry here in Kohima and he's one of a very char unique characters um, as a pastor and we are going to unpack that why he is unique and you would be shocked and you'd be surprised to know a lot of his views and opinions on many of the issues that uh, we are countering as a society. So thanks Pastor for joining me for this talk today. Thank you brother. So you are a pastor um, in the New Life Ministry Church. Yes. So how long you have been working here as a pastor here? Uh, this church started in 2010, okay. November 14. Okay. So it's more than 10 years now. 10 years now. Almost 11 years running. Wow, that's it's been a long time. Yeah. <laughs> so if I may know, what is, if you can tell me in brief, what is what does the church believe in? Our church believes in the full gospel, mm -hmm. the full counsel of God's word. It is in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Okay. We believe the Bible as the inerrant word of God. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and we believe in evangelizing people. Mm -hmm. And we, are, we have a motto statement that says, we are a church called for the lost with vision for worldwide revival and harvest. Mm -hmm. So that, I think, sums up all about our church. That's interesting. Yeah. And you have summed it up very well in a very, you know, nutshell, in a nutshell. So, um, how does it differ from Baptist den de denomination? Is it a Baptist or it's just like non-denominational church? Uh, it's a non-denominational, okay. uh, like a charismatic church. Okay. Originally, I'm from Baptist background. Yeah. My great-grandparents were the first Christians in a village. So, I am, this, I mean like, <laughs> they are, from the generation, I have received this Christian heritage mm -hmm. as a Baptist and so, but now like living in a, uh, I mean like, city where there are multi-racial people and people from different denomination and race, so, uh, I mean like, a church that is, uh, I mean like, interdenominational mm. and accommodative, I think it's, uh, it can, I mean, like minister to more people than just clinging to a denomination. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So, and um, if apart from your church as a ministry here in mm -hmm. the church building, mm -hmm. um, what do you do apart from you know worshiping, coming together in the, as a fellowship? What else do you do as a church? Uh, our church, we reach out to people in Burma also. Every year we go there to reach out to the Nagas in Burma area, mm -hmm. to train them up with the Word of God and teach them to walk in the supernatural, mm -hmm. to do healing, signs, wonder. Mm -hmm. The same thing we do even in our natural also, okay. in, and even among the Muslim pastors in Assam also. Mm -hmm. So we go to places like Nepal, Bhutan, wherever we get invited okay. to train people in the supernatural area. Mm -hmm. I want to understand what do you mean by charismatic? Is Baptist not a charismatic church? Uh, <coughs> it's just that people brand us as charismatic <laughs> because right. we are not under any denominational church. Right, right. So I would uh, love to address myself as, as a full gospel mm. minister, as a full gospel church. Mm -hmm. But since like independent church, people call us charismatic. That's right. why I'm just using the word charismatic. Mm -hmm. Charisma just means like... Uh, uh, the gift and it talks about uh, the charisma that is yeah. upon the person. So that's what yeah. other people brand us as. So I, that. I would rather prefer to call our church as a full gospel church. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So do you believe in signs, wonders and the miracles which can happen until even today? 
Yeah. Because if you look at Baptist Church, mm. uh, we don't <laughs> see people propagating that kind of idea mm. much, mm. right? Mm. But your church could be propagating more mm. of such um, waiting for or letting such things or praying for such things. Mm. I think like there are churches which believes in, in miracles and witnessing that it's happening in our church. Mm. And while it is very much less in the Baptist, you know, conglomeration. Mm. So, what do uh, you say on that? I believe in the science and wonder because mm -hmm. I'm a living testimony. Mm -hmm. I'm a brain tumor patient. Oh, really? I'm I did my operation in Guwahati Neurological Hospital, mm -hmm. CMC Valor. I did not get healed. I have two shunt tube from my head to my stomach. Oh, sorry so, to hear. when I was a brain tumor patient, I could not pass my urine and motion normally also. Mm -hmm. My hair was falling, I was using spec, mm. my memory was weak, I could not remember whether I had my food or not. Mm. So when doctors could not heal me and God healed me, how can I not believe in science and wonder mm -hmm. and supernatural and miracle and science and wonder? Yes, Tell me in brief, like, the, the journey of a healing that you have received from God as you believed. Yeah, it's like, a long story, but I'll yeah. just say in very brief. Very brief. Uh, actually, I went down prepared to die because I went down to CMC Valor mm. just to please my mother who was alive at that time. Mm. She wanted me to go for father checkup and operation treatment. And me, I had already met myself right with God and I was ready to go home. Mm. But just to please my mother, I was going down and God spoke to me that he has a plan, purpose for my life. Mm. So at that moment, I realized that I'm not going to die. Mm. I'm going to live. And I knew that even if the operation is a failure or a success, mm. I'm already going to live and serve the Lord. Wow. So, um, and the operation was not a success. <laughs> really? <laughs> but yeah, because I was still having all the symptoms. Okay. But one fine morning after coming back to Kohima, mm. God told me, go to the bathroom mm. without using medicine. Because without medicine, you cannot. without enema on my anus and oral medicine, I cannot pass my urine and motion. Mm. And I had to use this uh, catheter for passing mm. my urine. Oh, okay. So that morning I got up, I went to the bathroom. I was able to normally pass everything, my urine, my motion. Is this, is, that was that real? Yeah, it was real. And wow. so everything... My eyesight was restored to normal. I no longer use spec. Just instantly. Yeah, that moment it was gradual, but it is gradual. Yeah, right. but God did something miraculous at that moment, and uh, passing of urine motion was instant. Yeah. But uh, the eyesight, everything, was memory great. was gradual, and God totally healed me. That process of restoration is just yeah. amazing. And what did the doctor say when you came back? What, you know from. <clears throat> CMC to Kohima. Did uh, they say that you're going to leave only for this much days or something? That sort of. Yeah, actually, they just gave me some few, I mean, like, say, one year or a few months to leave. Wow. But God prolonged my life and I'm still alive. I'm married now. I have three children mm -hmm. and the fourth one is on the way now. Wow, that's <laughs> a beautiful story. That's beautiful. I didn't know this. I didn't know this because I've never heard your life story mm. before. I mean, yeah. I just came to talk about things that are going on. I see you as the public yeah. figure. Yeah. Just to get, you know, like having that uh, very su superficial information about you. Mm. But thanks for sharing that. Thank and you. did you ever meet your doctor after you got well? I went down once. Mm. I think it was in 2016 or 17. I went down mm -hmm. and they just told me that I'm uh, perfectly fine. No more brain tumor symptom. And last year also, I went down to, I went up to neurological, neurological hospital, mm -hmm. GNRC, Guwahati, mm -hmm. just to do a review. But there also, I was totally fine and no blockage in my shunt tube and the, the growth, the tumorous growth, it's just, I mean like stagnant, it's not growing, okay. it's just normal. Wow. Yeah. That's a beautiful story. Mm. I mean, I've never heard you know, from anyone personally, a story of this kind. Mm. And by this, miracle is real. Yeah, yeah. Right? Signs and wonders are real. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, wonderful. So, um, you, got to, you got to know Christ before you, before you got well or after you got well? How, how, does, how does that work for mm, you? I should say, like, after I got sick and I was frustrated, mm. disappointed, mm -hmm. I always wanted to be 
an army officer and one day joined the Naga National Movement. Oh, really? <laughs> that was my <laughs> dream because those days yeah. you really look up to the Naga True. National Workers. True. So that was my dream. But after my operation in 1996 mm -hmm. and 1997 during my class, okay. then after I appeared, okay. uh, my dream was shattered. I could not mm. join the army because I had a shunt tube now, sickness, rubber yeah. tube. Mm. So when I could not get here, I started seeking the Lord. And in 2000, while I was doing my engineering studies, mm -hmm. during one of my vacation, I encountered God. Uh, his supernatural power, the Holy Spirit mm. baptism. Mm -hmm. mm. Interesting. Now that you mentioned about the Naga National Movement, mm. I think since as a pastor, I think you're very vocal about the rights to self-determination of the Nagas. Yeah, yeah. So, but as you see, there are lots and lots of theologians and church mm. leaders here in Nagaland. Mm. And we hardly see them, you know, speaking about this, either against it or in support of it. Mm. Why did you come out so openly as a pastor? Doesn't, doesn't it contradict with the church values or something? I believe that full-time church workers should also stand for the poli political right of their people. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther Jr. He stood against the apartheid and he was in the actively involved in the civil, I mean like right movement and fought for the rights of the black. Mm -hmm. And the same thing we see like Joshua he was a political leader, a military leader, and he was a prophet. Mm -hmm. The same thing we see in Moses. He was a political leader mm -hmm. as well as a prophet mm -hmm. who led the Israelites out from Egypt into the Promised Land. I mean, like, he would not enter it, but he was instrumental, mm -hmm. Moses. Mm -hmm. So, as church leaders, we need to be the moral conscience of the people. We need to stand for the political right of our people. Mm -hmm. Just because we have come to know the Lord doesn't mean that we surrender all our political right. Mm -hmm. Israel is existing as a nation mm -hmm. because even though they are God's chosen people and they had no land of their own at one point, mm -hmm. they still f stood for their political right mm -hmm. that God has given them the land, the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. And that's why after the Second World War, I mean like since they suffered a lot, uh, we, then under the regime of the Nazi and mm -hmm. since they contributed a lot yeah. for the victory mm -hmm. I mean like that was a reward, a blessing that they got mm -hmm. and that is why Israel exists as a nation if mm -hmm. not they could have given up their political right mm -hmm. but they believe in that mm -hmm. and they stood for it mm -hmm. so even okay. as believer I think we should uh, I mean like stand for our political right mm -hmm. can I just go a little bit longer? carry on just uh, one month back, we had a Bible school of Supernatural. Okay. So there we had some Arunachali who used to be a practicing advocate in the Guwahati High Court. Mm -hmm. He was about to be elevated as a judge okay. in the High Court. But he encountered the Lord. He is serving the Lord. So he came to attend our Bible school to get trained in the Supernatural. Mm -hmm. So he was very curious the same thing about the Naga National Movement. Okay. So he was asking, why are Naga still fighting with India? Mm. So I told him, see, in 1929, we submitted a memorandum to Simon Commission. Yeah. And there was never a nation called India. Mm. But Nagas, they were, polit they were politically enlightened. Mm. And so since their political eyes were open, they choose not to be under Great Britain. Yeah. They choose not to be under the Indian Union. Yeah. So when the Simon Commission was given, I mean, like, they submitted a memorandum mm -hmm. not to join the Indian Union. Whereas all, almost the 500 princely states joined the Indian Union. Yeah. So when I shared that with this uh, judge, uh, with this advocate who used to be a practicing advocate in the Guwahati High Court, mm -hmm. and Arunachali, he said, you mm -hmm. Nagas have a strong political right. Mm -hmm. You need to stand for that. Mm, interesting. So, I mean, like, mm -hmm. if outside people believe that we have a political right mm -hmm. and that we have a legal right, how much more should we as Naga, even though we are in the ministry, we should advocate our political right. Mm -hmm. We should not allow people to silence it. Okay, okay. Thanks, thanks for that. Very interesting. So by that, I would like to ask, are you an Indian or Naga? See, <clears throat> we are Indian not by choice. Mm. 
we have been forcefully made Indian. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of aggression. Mm -hmm. So now people may say, you advocate about Naga nationalism. Why are you using Indian currency? Mm -hmm. See, I did not choose to use the Indian currency. Mm -hmm. It was forced upon. Yeah, it was forced upon us. Okay. So I did not choose to use the Indian identity. Mm -hmm. It is forced upon us. Okay. See, my grandparents, all of them have been involved in the Naga national movement. Mm -hmm. My father's side, my mother's side, my wife's side, all of them involved in the Naga national movement. Mm -hmm. When they died, they died feeling and knowing that they are Naga, not Indian. Mm -hmm. So today, though I'm an Indian citizen in my, I mean, like legal documents, mm -hmm. I consider myself more as a Naga than an Indian. Yeah. I am an Indian, not by choice. Mm, okay, that that point very clear. Now mm. then, would the, how would the church leaders respond to this? Do you th what did, what what do the churches you know uh, do about this? Can church play any role in in propagating the Naga national rights? Yeah, the church can enlighten and encourage their church member to mm. stand for what is truth, for mm. what is justice. Mm -hmm and to stand for the political right of any discriminated group of people. Mm -hmm. So Naga, we are a discriminated group of people. Mm -hmm. So much aggression, mm -hmm. so much, I mean like human right violation has taken place right. against the Naga. Mm -hmm. So we have forgiven the Indian, we have forgiven the Burmese people, but that forgiveness doesn't mean we up. forget our political right. Mm -hmm. So we have to stand for what is truth, mm -hmm. for what is justice. Okay, so you're encouraging even the Christians to stand up for the political rights. Yeah. I, it, it, it probably means non-violent, right? Yeah, non-violent. Non-violent means. Yeah. Mm, okay, interesting. I think, you know, when we talk about the involvement of our church in the political movement or political process, um, it's very negligible mm. or sometimes it's totally absent. Mm. So, I think it was from your Facebook page where I used to see sometimes praying for Naga yeah. political dialogue, mm. you know, to bring peace mm. in the Naga areas. Mm. I think it was, it was your church for sure. It was New Life yeah, Ministry. Yeah. So, that's mm. now I came to know that that's your church. Mm. And I appreciate it for, you know, taking a stand that way. Mm. And I have also seen you about uh, strongly protesting against the government obligation or mandatory vaccination, mm. you know, which was mandated by the government of Nagaland. Yeah, yeah. I think it was last year. Yeah, last, last, year, last year. Before last year. Yeah. And, and if I'm not mistaken, you were leading the protest, right? Yeah, I, I was one of those persons. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what made you think that you should not, be, you should not get vaccinated? I see, like, uh, the scripture clearly says that uh, God is healer. Mm -hmm. Exodus 15, 26 says, chapter 15, verse 26 says that He is the God who healed us. Mm -hmm. And First Peter two twenty four, Isaiah fifty three verse five says that by his stripes we are healed. Mm. And the last word Jesus mentioned on the cross is it is finished. Mm. So before mm. twenty twenty, we have seen so many healing and miracle. Mm. Mm. I have seen AIDS patient getting healed. Mm -hmm. I have seen cancer patient getting healed. I have seen people in coma being ministered Holy Communion through the nose feeding and getting healed and living long again wow. for many years. So suddenly when 2020 came, how can we as a church who have been walking in science, wonder, healing, miracle, suddenly start believing what the scientific world is saying, what World Health Organization, the global elites are saying. How can we believe that? God is more real, the mm -hmm. Bible is more real to us mm -hmm. than what the media is showing us. Mm -hmm. And nothing of that sort that the media was showing happened in Nagaland or in India. Mm -hmm. They were just causing fear to grip the heart and mind of the people. Right. See, from 2020, from the very start of pandemic, I've encountered, personally, I've gone and prayed for COVID patient, ICU, cabin. Sometimes I've been taken by police car. Mm -hmm. I've been taken by VIP car. And I have gone and prayed, OK? okay. <laughs> See, I can't mention the name. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's okay. <laughs> but I've been there. Okay. And when I go to the ICU also, I don't use sanitizer, I don't use masks. Mm. I believe that, I'm not saying that sickness is not there. Mm -hmm. I'm a science student. Yeah. I'm not intelligent. Only later on I did my theological study. Okay. Okay. So I believe in the scientific discovery also. But I believe that God is more real than the scientific facts. Mm -hmm. So suddenly just because COVID started, COVID pandemic started, doesn't mean that 
God has stopped healing mm. and that miracle signs wonder has stopped happening. Yeah. So that's why I was very vocal mm -hmm. because the pandemic was not helping anyone. Mm. It, is, uh, it was just destroying the deliberate earning of the middle class, mm -hmm. the lower class, and it was destroying the education career of the students. Mm -hmm. So I was very vocal mm -hmm. about that mm -hmm. because uh, it's not fulfilling. It's not helping the commandment or the middle lower class. Mm -hmm. It's just fulfilling the agenda of the global elites. Mm -hmm. So if you do a long study, mm -hmm. since now we have the internet and yeah. access to many information, we can know that in 2015, Bill Gates talked about the coming pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you one question. Yeah, please. Is Bill Gates a prophet? Is he a seer that he can predict about the coming pandemic? I think he's not, and he's not a soothsayer or anything. So how can you predict about the coming pandemic in 2015? Yeah, I feel I'm not sure about the prediction. It's, I mean, like, yeah. video is already there, right. in the YouTube everywhere. Mm. And even before that also, he already said that the world population is, uh, I mean, like, it's, it's only... Overpopulated. Yeah, mm. overpopulated, and 500 million is just the idle population mm. for planet Earth to sustain. So I think yeah, that, that you can just do the plus <laughs> minus and <laughs> I would I would like to further study on that, uh. and uh, it 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 could it could be true mm. and it could be like a conspiracy theory theory also. Okay. Anyway, anyway, keeping that aside, I would like to also know from you, how mm. do you how do you what do you advise to people you know who have been praying for the sickness and never getting healed and died? See, like um, I don't have the answer for everything that yes. happened. Yes. But through my personal experience, I can see that almost 95 person that I pray for mm. who got COVID mm. and were in ICU mm. under the ventilator using oxygen, they got healed, they live, they're surviving. Mm -hmm. I should say 98 person plus. Wow. Okay. okay. So when the healing ratio is so high, mm. why should we fear sickness where the healing ratio is so high? Yeah. Cancer, the ratio of recovery is more or less. Mm -hmm. We should be fearing cancer more than mm -hmm. COVID-19. COVID but just because cancer is there, we are not hiding. Yeah. Just because AIDS is there, we are not hiding. Okay. So AIDS recovery rate, what do you say? The recovery rate is, I mean like... Almost zero. It's zero. Yeah. But people are still getting healed from AIDS. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean like there are a lot of stories I could share. Okay, so in case if I, want, limited, if I <laughs> want to talk to them in future, those who got recovered from AIDS, uh, will, you will be able to help me find those people and uh, have a conversation or something? I mean like uh, if, or, they yeah, if they are comfortable, that is course. they can share the testimony. They would like to testify. Yeah. 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 So, but there is, a, there is a data saying that also, um, you know, people who got va vaccinated, mm. even though they are sick, Mm. They have higher chances of surviving. Of course, they get COVID, they get contracted, and but those who don't get vaccinated, mm. once they are sick, they have lower chances of surviving. And that's what the data says. Mm. So, what? How do you? How do you justify? You know, like of not getting vaccinated, mm. and with that benefits of getting vaccinated. See, that is what the data is saying. Yeah. But on the ground reality, mm. so many people I've I've come across mm. who were COVID positive. Mm. They were not vaccinated. They easily got recovered just having good food, good diet, yeah. having dog meat, dog soup, or <laughs> simple paracetamol. Okay. They just got ill. Mm. My wife in 2020, he got all the COVID symptoms. Mm. She lost her smell. She was yeah. having breathing problem, fever, and everything. Okay. She just got ill even without going to the doctor. So she, she, she's not also vaccinated? She's not vaccinated. Was it out of her choice or you... Us because not to God told us not okay. to vaccinate and like, I mean like vaccination, we should know how it is made. Yeah. We take the weak virus, yeah. the COVID virus, mm. and then we uh, inject on the people. Yeah. But this vaccination has not been implemented with proper study. Mm -hmm. it, it has only been uh, implemented under emergency use. Mm -hmm. I know so many medical doctors who are not vaccinated. Okay. Specialists, super specialists here in Kohim also. Mm -hmm. why, did, not why, vaccinated. Did, why, did, why didn't they get vaccinated? Because, because they you know. said it's not been implemented okay. during a proper animal trial. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm, okay. In fact, I, I'm, a, I'm a vaccinated, double vaccinated person. Okay. Um, it's okay, no yeah. problem. <laughs> so that's how we, 
you know, I, I, I believe that vaccination will help me mm. um, because that's what the science was talking about. Uh. And I'm not a science student uh. and I don't know the, the, the uh. detail of it, but I decided to get vaccinated okay. anyway. So it's very interesting and very um, impressive to get to hear your opinion and stance mm. on this. Although no one is favoring you in, in this it's time, okay. <laughs> like you are really taking your stand and uh, putting your faith in God. Mm. And I hope you would continue to do that. Thank you. Mm. So Can I just say something? Please. My sister, elder sister and her husband, they were in the police department. They had to get vaccinated, not out of choice, but sort of indirect coercing, True. like forcing. Yeah. They got vaccinated. My sister was almost bedridden for two weeks. After the vaccine. Yeah, with all the COVID symptoms. Mm. I went, prayed, encouraged her, partook the Holy Communion, mm -hmm. and then she recovered. So I told her, don't go for any more vaccination again. <laughs> but you know, like the government is yeah, yeah. Uh, not giving a choice to the people. A especially See, the employees. Yeah, the Nuremberg Court, it clearly states that mm. vaccination is to be voluntary. Mm. But that is not the option here exactly. with the COVID exactly. vaccine. Although I'm a vaccinated person, I don't want you know, vaccination as an obligation or yeah. mandatory. It has to be a choice. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. That's what we are fighting for. Yeah. We are, what we are telling the government is, if people want to get vaccinated, let them get vaccinated. Yeah. But let it be a choice. Let Don't force choice. us. Exactly. Because when something bad happens, they are not taking the risk. True. One of my assistant pastor, elder brother, mm. is a government employee, retired. He got vaccinated, he got half paralyzed. Oh. And eyesight also affected. Mm -hmm. After and vaccine. yeah, and he was all um, bedridden for a long time also, wow. after vaccination. <laughs> and there are some few dead cases that has happened who we personally know. Mm -hmm. But see, their government doesn't bring out those data, those statistics. And even when it happened, they just want to silence it. Mm -hmm. And people who get affected, they are afraid to come out. True. I believe time will tell whether yeah. vaccination is for real or mm. it's just a drama. Yeah. So thanks for joining me. Thank you. And I look forward you. to talking to you again. Um, Pastor um, Hazato. Hazato. <laughs> it's very difficult to pronounce. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank you. Mm. Thank you.